What's up, future respiratory therapist? Hey, in this video, we're going to talk about the difference between versus MIP. What's the difference? Why does it matter? And why you need to know? Let's dive in. Alrighty, so as I stated, we're talking all about MIP versus MIP here. Now, before we get into this, let me give you what these acronyms actually stand for because we understand that. Uh, a lot of times, especially in the healthcare world, acronyms take over, and it's so vitally important that when you hear PIMP or you hear MIP, you understand what we're talking about. So oh, when we say PIMP, we're talking specifically about peak inspiratory pressure. That's what it stands for. Now, when we say MIP, we're talking about maximum inspiratory pressure. Now, I know what you're thinking right now. That sounds the same. They're nowhere near being the same thing. So what's the difference? Well, here we go. I'm going to show you a pressure waveform here. It's going to come up. We're going to come up like this. We're going to peak out right here. We're going to come back down to our baseline. Okay. Now, what is peak inspiratory pressure? Peak, peak. This is refers to that point right there. This is the peak inspiratory pressure that was met or resulted in positive pressure therapy. That's what peak inspiratory pressure is. The peak inspiratory pressure happens at the end of inspiration associated with a positive pressure breath. That's what peak inspiratory pressure is. Now, Let's clarify. Well, then what in the heck is maximum? Because that also seems like the maximum inspiratory pressure, right? And if you think about it like that, I can see where you're confused. I can see where you're going. It seems like the maximum, Joe, and that's fair, but it's not the case. You see, maximum inspiratory pressure, when we talk about, we are talking about a patient who we are now wanting to assess their readiness for liberation from mechanical ventilation. And what we desire to do is to assess their voluntary respiratory muscles. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask this patient to suck in for us as hard as they possibly can. That's what we're going to do here. So the patient is on the vent. We're going to hold a button or press button on the ventilator that says MIP. It might also say NIF, negative inspiratory force. Now, see, when you put those two together, this makes more sense, right? We understand it that it is MIP, but you may also see and hear it referred to as NIF. Now, if you think about NIF, it makes more sense because NIF is negative inspiratory force that is generated by the diaphragm against a closed inspiratory valve. So what we do is we close the valve off, we ask the patient to suck in for us as hard as they can against a closed circuit, and then they're gonna generate, the diaphragm's gonna drop as hard as they can, as, as strong as their, their inspiratory muscles are, their diaphragm and their inspiratory muscles, you're going to see a dip in the pressure. And then we release, and then this comes back up here to baseline. You see what this is, is this is your MIP. You see, MIP and NIF is a negative value. So two different things. Go back and look at it. Is a positive value. This is positive. And it happens during the inspiratory phase of a mechanical breath or a positive pressure breath, should I say. MIP is negative and we do it intentionally to assess the patient's strength of their respiratory muscles. You see, if somebody does a NIF and it comes down like this and it comes back up, and let's say that number is negative five, that's not a lot of strength, right? That's not a whole lot of, 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 of pressure difference. And so that's not a good MIP. It's not a good NIF. That does not support what we would consider to be uh, an indicator as a successful liberation from mechanical ventilation. You see, what you want is this drop to come down here and you want it to be more negative than negative 20. 
So essentially, you want it to be less than negative 20. And this is centimeters of water pressure. Now, why did I say less? Because negative 5 was bad. Isn't that less than negative 20? Well, not when you put it on a spectrum. You see, if we draw a timeline here, and this is 0, and this is plus 20, and this is negative 20, well, anything more negative than negative 20 is less. So we want negative 30, negative 40, negative 50. That's what we want. If it's negative 5, see, that's actually greater than negative 20. It gets real complicated when you start putting things on a negative scale. But we realize that we want it to be less than negative 20 centimeters of water pressure, meaning more negative. So like I said, negative 22, negative 28, negative 30, negative 50. All of those are good. Negative 5, not so good. And that's the difference between PIP and MIP. Remember, PIP, the peak pressure during an inspiratory, positive, inspiratory phase of a positive pressure breath. MIP is an assessment that we do to assess for readiness from weaning or readiness for liberation from mechanical ventilation or to monitor patient spontaneous pulmonary mechanics during neuromuscular times, like, like Guillain-Barre or myasthenia gravis. It's like, okay, well, they're, they're, they're good. We're monitoring them, and their MIPS are negative 30, negative 40. That's good. But if they start to fall greater than negative 20 to the negative 5, 8, 10, 12, 15, then that's not so good. So we realize that, that this person is, is, is showing excessive weakness, and we may need to support them. I want to read this to you out of page... 1166 of Egan's, uh, this is the 12th edition. It, uh, it says MIP is a more specific measure than vital capacity. MIP provides information based solely on maximum output of the inspiratory muscles. A maximum stimulus, stimulus is provided by total occlusion of the airway. When you totally occlude the airway and you have that patient stuck in and taking a big deep breath, that diaphragm is going to drop. It's going to generate a negative pressure. The stronger those muscles are, and the more effort they give you, the more negative that number will be. So, there you have it. Pimp versus MIP. I'm your story coach. Here's where you can find me. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and turn on the bell notification so you know when new um, videos are posted. Also, come follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Also, over on LinkedIn at Joe Lewis. A lot of good stuff happening on LinkedIn. If you're a student and you're watching this, I encourage you to go make it make a LinkedIn post or, or not a post, but, but, but an account right now so you can start making professional connections outside of Instagram and TikTok. And then always you can send me an email to respiratorycoach at gmail.com. Remember at the end of the day, the details matter. Peak inspiratory pressure versus maximum inspiratory pressure. They sound the same, but you as a respiratory therapist know that those are two completely different things. Remember, average is easy. Don't be it.